We're very excited about our new Drought One technology, which is a native gene-based drought tolerance based on the genes that uh, exist in corn today. And what we're doing is identifying the genes from different genetic uh, pools, both from the elite germplasm base within the U.S. as well as some international based germplasm that Pioneer has characterized over the years. And we're pulling these native genes together into products that will have an enhanced level of drought tolerance. And uh, our yield goal is to have a 6% yield advantage over the very best drought tolerant hybrids in the industry today. So we pick the, te the tough benchmark products to beat and we're shooting for a 6% yield advantage plus we still need the dry down, the stock strength, the disease resistance for things like head smut and gosses wilt to go along with that drought tolerance to give our customers what they're needing. Well, our Drought One hybrids, really in the past five years, we've had a, a revolutionary breakthrough in molecular breeding where we can actually identify where the major genes reside on those 10 unique chromosomes of corn and we can actually track the genes through the breeding populations which allows us to stack those drought genes together along with those important agronomic genes in a way that was not possible five years ago. So once we find the markers or genes that are responsible for those traits we can track them uh, via molecular fingerprinting and really identify the progeny that have not only the best phenotype or what you see in the field but also the best genotype or the composition on those chromosomes. Drought is one of the most complex traits that we'll ever deal with. It, it's yield, it's really yield under extreme stress and that stress can vary from year to year. You can have an early drought stress where the corn gets shorter. Uh, you can still get some pretty good recovery if you get rain. The most devastating droughts happen around the tasseling time or flowering date. Two weeks before tasseling to two weeks after can really devastate yield. You can lose over half your yield potential with strong heat or drought at that period of time. Uh, the other key component is heat and both daytime heat and nighttime heat and high temperatures can be very damaging to the plant. They use up a lot of energy just to stay alive and really it, it slows down the photosynthesis and the active grain fill that you have. So we need to separate in some cases the heat tolerance versus the drought tolerance because if you're growing hybrids in South Texas you're going to have a lot of very hot high humidity type of conditions which are quite different from the high plains of Texas where the nighttime temperatures cool down a little bit your daytime may be hot but it's a different type of heat dryness combination. Well optimistically if everything goes as we had hoped we could have hybrids released as early as 2011 for our growers to experience and we're targeting the western corn belt for our initial releases because that's where we tend to get the most drought and where we think the biggest value on a sustainable year to year basis uh, would, re would reside. Well, Woodland, California is, is a beautiful environment for both corn and people. Uh, beautiful evenings, it really cools down nice. But the daytimes uh, get very intense sunlight, high temperatures, and it doesn't rain. So we can really control the amount of water made available to the crop through our drip tape system where we can really fine tune the stress. We can, I call it almost torture the plants where we give them just enough rain or irrigation water to stay alive and see what the response is between the different hybrids. We can control when the stress hits, the intensity of the stress, and, and we can burn the corn up any year if we want to. But we can also give enough water to see the response of the different genotypes or uh, hybrids that we have.